Good evening to all the participants. On behalf of PSLA College of Engineering and Technology, Dindukal, I welcome all the registered participants from different organizations in India and abroad for the international live webinar on IT2 Business 2.0 organized by Department of Computer Science and Engineering and IST. I extend my warm welcome to today's chief guest, Mr. M. Monica Vasagan, founder and CEO of Lucid Soft System and property investor, United Kingdom. Nowadays, information technology tuned to new IT based on business 2.0. Business process is carried out using internet-based services. So in this webinar, it is proposed to discuss the application of IT in development of business. A small introduction about the chief guest. He has completed his Bachelor of Computer Science and Engineering in 2000 from Muhammad College of Engineering and Technology. He started his career in a private sector bank as a computer programmer in 2001. Then he joined MNC in 2003 and worked with various clients like Ford Automobiles for two years. In 2005, he moved to UK and worked in various company, companies in sectors like insurance, mobile technology, railways, foreign currency exchange, payment card industry like MasterCard. Then he started his own IT company named Lucid Soft System in UK from 2010 and it is into property investment since 2015. The technologies that he worked on, data warehousing, business intelligent, big data, cloud computing, and he has done roles such as development, design, software architecture, on-site, offshore team lead, project management, and client management extra. I hope this section will make everyone get motivated and be beneficial for us. Now, I hand over the session to Chief Guest, Mr. M. Monica Vasagan. Please, sir. Now, all the participants are requested to mute the mic. And if you have any queries, message in the chat box. Welcome, sir. Hello, everyone. Good evening to meet you all. First, I would like to thank PSNA management for organizing such a great webinar and also the uh, HOD of Computer Science Engineering Department and uh, coordinators for giving me an opportunity to meet students and share my experience. Probably I find this session will be useful to you. All I'm going to do is share my experience so it helps you to gear up your career in IT and grow yourself a lot. Right, so we got an hour, so I'll try to make sure I stick to the time. Yeah, so this is my lunch break actually. Uh, so I have to be on time and get back to my office. <laughs> yeah, let's share my screen. Yeah, can you all see my screen? Right. If you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to comment in the chat box. Then we can yeah, take it up from there. Right. So this session, IT to Business 2.0, you might be wondering why IT to Business? I'm an IT professional. I'm doing computer science engineering or software engineering or BTEC related to IT. Why I want to get into business? I'm not doing a management MBA course or BBA course. That would be your first question, I guess. And why 2.0? Why not 1.0, right? Let me try to explain why the title is IT to Business 2.0. 1.0, what I think is IT to IT, and 2.0 is IT to Business. What I mean by IT to IT is, okay, you do an IT course, be degree in com uh, computer science engineering, and get a job in an uh, MNC, like a, Bipros or Tech Mahindra or Infosys or Amazon or any IT company and spend your life there. That is 1.0. This is my perspective. And what is 2.0 then? 2.0 is, yeah, you study ITs, do the same thing, and then you become an IT entrepreneur, right? And you employ people. You help other people to get a job, employ them, make their life flourish 
So that's IT to business 2.0. That's how I think. That's how I'm working now. Let's see how the world is looking at IT as an industry as a whole. What you are seeing is the current spend across all the countries in IT or information technology. As you can see, most of the spend are from US, Europe, and the next one is Asia. And I am sure in Asia, we are number one. Like India is number one. We provide IT services across the world. Without us, yeah, it's hard for the world to move in IT. You can take an example, Sundar Pichai in Google or Microsoft. It could be anything. We have our footprint everywhere. Now the question comes to the students, you, the young generation, who has got full potential and a lot of energy to transform it further and make India a proud country. How can I do it? Right, first you have to have a vision. Okay, this is the total IT spend across the world. Right, how I'm going to monetize from this? What is my slice of the cake from this? What I mean is, yeah, Asia does 14% here, right? And out of 14%, what is going to be my contribution and how I'm going to make money? When I say make money, you set up a business, get profits, you employ people. It's a big thing, not just making money, right? I think you got an idea. <laughs> Right. This is what happening. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Just type in yes, yes in the in the comment box if you all can hear me. So I know that okay. You can hear me. So I want this session to be more interactive. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can see comments from Nirmala, Kirtana, Sujata. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. So the uh, screen uh, share, it's nothing but a robot. When I was doing IT in 2000, <laughs> Can you, if you don't mind, can you unmute? Uh, sorry, can you mute uh, others, everyone? So it's easy for others to hear. Thank you. Yeah. When I was doing a Bachelor of Engineering in 2000, I used to think, okay, robots would come into existence in 2050 or probably after 50 years. No, that's not correct. It is happening now. It is happening now. So these pictures are just next to our home. These are the robots delivering food deliveries, like what we have in India, like a, what is it we have? A Zomato or something like that, right? People deliver food items. When you order pizza or something, yeah, people deliver it, right? Now robots are delivering in UK. So that is me and my kids standing, watching the robots. They are all lined up there and waiting for orders. So when people make an order through their mobile phone, so they go to the web app and place an order. Like, okay, I want uh, say for example, one kg of rice or maybe a pizza or could be anything or a pack of chocolate crisps or anything. So the order goes to the store and when the order goes in, one of the robots get notified that, okay, there is an order for this customer and you have to deliver to their home their home address is automatically mapped in Google Maps, right? So the robot automatically goes to the show, store, the store sh uh, shopkeeper collects all the items, put it in this robot. They open the box, put it in the robot and say, go, that's it. So the robot automatically navi travels through the road. There is a payment walking route. So it goes through the route and come back, come to your location. All you have to do is unlock in the mobile app. In mobile app, you just unlock it, the door opens in the robot. You collect your items, 
and say thank you, the robot goes back to this stand. This is all real. This is what happening. That's why I put a picture of the company that does that in UK and my picture, my kids picture watching how this is happening. So this is not in future, this is now. So how come this is all possible? Exactly. This is using machine language. ML is nothing but machine, la machine learning and nothing to do with the augmented reality. Augmented reality is something different. Yeah, machine language, artificial intelligence, mapping the mobile uh, maps technology. So these are all possible. These things are happening now. People have implemented it. Okay, you have to step back a second. Like, okay, people have implemented this. So that means people have already done a research. They did these studies. So they learned somehow. So there is some sort of programming software in place. People are using it and business have implemented it and making money, right? Are we up to that mark now? Do we know how to do machine language? Do we know whether that exists now or not? And we have to gauge ourselves how far we are behind or if we are up to date, yes, we are good. So what I'm, and the next one is augmented reality. The, the other picture that you can see, my daughter with an octopus. Why I put that picture here? My daughter, she's studying about octopus in uh, year one, year one is first standard. She says she's studying about octopus and she was saying, okay, daddy, I want to see octopus, right? So I can't take her to a sea or ocean to show octopus or go to aquarium in this current lockdown situation. So what I did, you know, through mobile phone, you can use Google's augmented reality or virtual reality, bring the virtual octopus into your living room hall you can bring it to that you can rotate it kids can see underneath they can go around and see the features of octopus octopus will be moving this is just a photo but yeah it will move it moves its tentacles so it's easy for her to understand by looking at octopus and learning what tentacle is right so these are all possible using augmented reality, virtual reality. What we want to understand is, yeah, this is how the world is going and are we keeping up ourselves updated with the latest technologies, tools? So we should always be up to the mark in speed with the world, right? How can we know all these things? We have to read a lot of journals. Probably you have to go visit your library. PSNA would have big library, just go there, see the computer journals. You don't need to study from all the pages. You just turn around the pages and keep up to date like what is happening. You can go to Google, you can go to YouTube and see what are the latest trends in IT. In that way, you can always keep up to date. Yeah, does it make sense? Just put a hashtag make sense in the comments so I know that you are following. That helps me to, yeah, it'll be more interactive. Right. So how is the market currently? What is the supply and demand for IT professionals? So all you are doing, uh, are you all in uh, uh, year three, year two, seven, uh, year two or year three? Or I don't know which year you are. And probably can you come put it in the comment what you want to be when you pass out be or when you get the degree what you want to be just put it in the comment like okay you want to work in a mnc whatever you want what is your vision what you want to be so that helps me to go in that direction so this is the current supply and demand for an it professionals this picture i have taken yeah that's good i can see from nirmala it field yeah which is good and if you look at the graph, the low and low and high, right? Talent supply in y-axis and uh, demand in the x-axis, right? If you look at this, the high demand and the more talent supply at the moment is mobile and front-end development. Yeah, I could say Kirtana, Anand, yeah, work in MNC, which is good, yeah. 
yeah that's how you should have a vision like okay after finishing it i want to do that yeah it's fine so mobile uh, technology like app development it, it could be android or ios and the front end technology are in high demand now and more talent supply what is mean by talent supply if the demand is for 100 people there are 100 people or 150 people out there in the market for mobile technology or front end development right when i say front end development it's not the old and days asp or html it's high end front end development using react so many technologies are there in front end so many things yeah and if you look at the machine learning that's very interesting the demand is high for machine learning and data science but the talent supply is very low that's where you should focus on there is no talent supply but the demand is more what i mean is there is a demand for 100 people but in the market we got only 50 people available right so what will happen in such situation the company will be ready to pay double the salary to the people who know machine language or data science because there is no supply they want 100 people but they got only 50 so the companies will be fighting to recruit people right so you should keep yourself updated in machine language, data science, or new emerging technologies. So when I studied business, uh, engineering, all we study is this Pascal, Fortran, COBOL. I don't know whether you know about those softwares or not, but yeah, those are very old softwares. At that time, I didn't have any such opportunity like these webinars or up-to-date trends or internets to keep me up-to-date, right? All the highest language I know at that time is C, C++, that's it. And I heard about Java when I was doing year four. In the final semester, yeah, I heard, oh, there is something called Java. All I know is system.out.println, and that's what I know. And the people, and the demand was high at that time for Java. People who knows like system.print.out.ln, they got a job because there is a demand and there is no supply, right? Now we are in the same situation. If you know machine language, data science, big data. Yeah. Uh, sir, can you say, no need to say sir, you can call me Manik. Uh, can you say the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Machine learning is, say for example, you got your mobile phone and you use Alexa, right? Amazon's Alexa or Google uh, Assistant. When I say Google Assistant, okay, Google, can you play a song in YouTube or something like that? It does the learning. It translates my voice into English words or whatever it is, and then searches. When I say, okay, can you play music? So it understands, play something. Okay, what to play? Music. So it correlates both play and music. And what song? Tamil song. If I say, okay, play music, Tamil songs or something, then he searches what matches, puts a weightage. So the machine is trying to learn. If I ask more questions to Google, it's build up a profile for me. Like that's how the machine learns and say, okay, if it's a manic, he likes listening to Tamil songs or listening or visiting places, holiday, it builds a profile for me, right? That's how machine learns. How the robot learns? It learns from every instruction you give. So you have to be always up to date with the latest trends. Okay, what are when I say latest trends? What are the latest trends at the moment? This is based on my experience and what I see here in UK, and I guess it will be the same in US and India as well, because most of the MNCs in India, they provide these services to US and European clients or Australian clients. So they always be up to date. So it apply to US, UK or Europe or Australia, India. The trending technologies at the moment are big data, data science, cloud computing. That has changed dramatically. You no need to buy a laptop nowadays. You can go to Azure. When I say cloud computing, there are so many uh, companies out there providing cloud computing like microsoft they do azure you might have heard about azure and google has got their own and amazon all we know is amazon does the delivery shopping so they got AWS, amazon web services they do cloud computing most of the companies they don't have offices they don't have laptops all they do is 
give access to cloud computing. It is like going to your Gmail or something. Just open up Google Chrome, log into cloud computing, access the desktop from there. You can do networking, database, you don't need to install Oracle or SQL Server or anything in your laptop. You can have everything in Google or uh, Amazon or Azure. You can do everything over there. So you have to study more about cloud computing. That is going to be the future. You don't need to be expert or you no need to do, uh, no need to learn A to Z in cloud computing. Because that was the mistake I did. I said, oh, it's like an ocean. How do I learn? How do I start from A, B, C, D, up to Z? No, you don't need to do that. You just know what is happening. What is A, what is B, how it's all interlinked. That's what you don't need to be an expert. It's hard for everyone to be an expert in everything. So I have listed out some of the trends. You no need to know all the 10 or 15 points. Now, you just choose what you like first. Then focus on that. Some people say, okay, I'm interested in artificial intelligence and robotics. Yeah, learn about robotics. Learn about the companies that provide uh, about, uh, do artificial intelligence, what they do, what tools they use. In artificial intelligence, you can do Python. I think uh, most of you are learning Python now as a curriculum or maybe uh, out of your own interest, I guess. Is that right? How many of you know Python? Just put hashtag yes. Python in the comment box in the chat. So I know you are learning Python in your college or college, or it could be like uh, you, you would have seen YouTube and learning Python or something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, as a starter. Yeah, that's good. That's a way to go. Even I'm not an expert in Python because my, my specialization is in business intelligence, big data, that's my, and cloud computing. Those are my specialization. So I am not in more into Python or Docker or virtual machine or machine learning or blockchain. Right, so yeah, Python is very good. It is more powerful. You can do artificial intelligence. You can do anything from Python. Right, so choose your interest, right? And then focus on that. You don't need to put your finger, hands in everything right at this time because you may be in year two or year three you've got plenty of time until you finish your degree so focus on something know something then you extend your skill sets to other thing right all right so let's focus on how uh, development works in the real time that's what you need because you could be learning you uh, going through youtube to learn new skills or new technology new software that's fine or you got wonderful lecturers professors to teach you what is c c plus plus java what is python how to do syntax so in this session we are not going i'm not going to teach anything about technology syntax and things i'm going to give you my real time experience because that's what i lagged when i was doing i was a student i don't know what is going to happen when i come out of university or college how the real world is going to uh, how i'm going to face the world i don't know about that so i'm going to share my experience so you know what's going to happen right it is like if you want to go to bank if you're going for first time it'll be a bit nervous oh i'm going to bank what do i do whom should i talk to how do i get withdraw money or how do i deposit a check how do i speak to a manager how many people are there? How do you fill up a chalan, right? But if you went to bank for a couple of times, then you should know, okay, yeah, I know where it is. I know how to enter the bank. There'll be a security. The chalan will be in this desk. I just fill it up and then give it to the cash counter, get the money back, come back, right? So what I'm trying to say is give you some sort of familiarity how the real world is going to be. So I want you to take part in this journey. I'm going to take you through the journey, right? So let's all travel together. Then it makes my life easier to explain, right? Okay, does it make sense? Yes, put make sense. So yeah, I know you are following. Yeah, that's good. So where to start studying like uh, IoT and stuff? <laughs> See, what I would say is YouTube is the best place I would say. See, the tools are there, but how we use those tools, like Facebook, YouTube, it is in our hand. That's a good question. But I would say start with YouTube. 
Right. I don't know whether you are studying about agile methodology or software development methodology in, in your curriculum or not. Right. So let's say we are all passed out in B and we got job in an MLC. Let's say Infosys as an example. Right. So we all got job in Infosys. Right. So we all this is the first day we go there and we get the intro and all those things. Yes, fine. We are happy. Then they say, OK, yeah. Uh, let's take an example. The last comment from yeah, Nirmala. Let's say, OK, Nirmala is in the project. What is a project? What is the role of an IT student or no, no, you are not an IT student now because you all graduated virtually. Yeah. What is the role of IT professional? Nirmala as an example in this case, what is her, what is her role? Right. What will happen in a project? So the project is something a defined a scope defined like, OK, this is the input and I want some output. Right. The input could be. Let's take an example of Gmail. Someone says, I want to send an email, so I want a product where I can use it to send an email, right? So that comes to the IT team. So they plan, that's the first step. Now they all divided into different sprint. Let's touch upon what sprint is later, but yeah. In the diagram, you can see the red one, like a plan. So the business analyst or architects, they plan, okay, what is required? Okay, they want an email system, email features to send an email. Then it goes to the design team. They design how the interface should be. You should have a two button, two from address and subject and body of the text, and they need a send button. And then they say, oh yeah, we need a, a button to do attachment. Yeah, they have attachment. So that's how they design it, right? Then it goes to the next team. Who is the next team? The actual developers who got those skills in front-end development, database design, those people, right? The design is done by system architect or solution architects, right? They don't do develop. They just say this is how the design should be. How to implement that goes to the development team, right? So they may be a database developer or front-end developers, Python developers, could be anything. So they build the design using Visual Basic or uh, .NET or Java, whatever the system is. Yeah, they choose the tools and build it and then pass it to test team. What is a test team? They test the software. When someone puts a two address and, cl and uh, click a send button, you might have seen Google would say, oh, there is no subject. Do you want to send it? There is no body. Do you want to send it? So those kind of testing is done by the testing team. When they click the send button, has it received uh, reached the recipient or not? So those kind of testing will be done by test team, right? And then they do the review. Once it is tested, they review. Okay, let's see what the plan is. Yeah, plan is the requirement is for an email system. And they review, okay, is the delivered solution, the soft piece of software is doing what it has been asked to do. Right? The review, once they are all happy, then it goes to the launch. Launch is the yellow one there, right? It goes to the launch. When it is launched, it is available to the public. We all can go to Google, open Gmail, send and receive emails. You got it, right? So this is a sprint, a small deliverable, small piece of deliverable, deliverable right? Then the project will say, okay, we are moving to next sprint. Sprint is nothing but a four week or five week window for developing a piece of software. It's just a time box. Then they move on to sprint two. What is sprint two? There could be a new feature in uh, Google might be. Say for example, calendar uh, integration in Google. When you open Google, it automatically shows the calendar as well, right? Or in the side, it shows the chat window. That might be a sprint two. They may say, okay, we got an email system. Now we want to extend that feature to add some added value as well. So that becomes a sprint two, then sprint three. But process is same. They do the planning first. They do the design. They build the software, test it thoroughly, review it, and then launch it to public. You got it, right? That's how generally it works in an IT where it is a development or product-based or solution. 
even that's the same for any mobile apps when someone says i want to have a mobile app develop for say for example uh, a bank in india like say icic they say okay i want to have a mobile app for the customers to show their balances or transactions so they plan it and then it will test it and then launch it right okay let's see what's happened let's go bit deeper into what will happen in the team so the first thing will happen is the input from the end user or a team or someone would have a problem they say okay i want this piece of software to be developed so they will become the product owner so why i am telling the terminologies these are the terminologies used in the company so when you get a campus placement or go to the pro, uh, join the company on first few day few weeks if someone says who is the product owner you should know what product owner means you don't need to know all the details but you should know those terminologies apart from the technical term you should know what are the terminologies used in a company those like is agile or scrum you can google or you can do the youtube videos to get more details but yeah you should, at a high level this is what will happen so there will be a input from users the product those those will be the product owners and they say i want these features in this product the feature number 1 in our example yeah feature 1 is ability to send to address put a to address and feature 2 would be like i want a ability to do the subject ability theory will be like a message box and then the send button do an attachment those are the features you think just open any mobile app software and see what are the features it has like a whatsapp what are the features it has you can attach a document you can attach pictures you can make a call those are the features of whatsapp so whenever you use any software you should think like a professional you shouldn't be like a just a consumer of whatsapp you should see how it is designed why it is designed in this way why not the other way why the send button is next to the text box you type message and then send button is next to the why it is like that what is it making the user it's making user friendly right so those are the little things features you should whenever you see a software you should think like an it professional why it is done like this oh i like this design okay just keep it in mind can i improve it much better that's how you should think okay let's come back to this one so you got a product owner with a list of features so that will go to a team so the team could be a developer a business analyst it could be a tester it could be the solution architect it goes to a team it's not it doesn't go to an individual so never think of an individual don't think that okay i should place a mark in the team it's all teamwork so it goes to a team they design and they break it down into individual task that becomes like a sprint backlog so task number 1 what design task number 2 what to do 3 what to do they break it down all the features into individual task and then put it in a time box like okay we are going to in this sprint in 2 to 4 weeks i'm going to do five task and these are the task you play back to the product owner saying that okay in 4 weeks time we are going to deliver task 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so after and every hour 24 hours that is daily there'll be a scrum master someone so you should know these terminologies scrum master so it's similar to project manager so every day say for example morning 9 o'clock they assemble and then discuss about what we did yesterday what we are going to do today and what i'm going to do tomorrow to achieve task 1 2 3 4 5 and do i have any issues any blockers anything blocking am i dependent on some other team if there is a going to be a delay the scrum master would notify the product owner saying that okay these are the problems we have can you help us to solve that right once okay once we solve everything after 4 weeks they do a review what is what is going to happen in the review meeting they call the product owner and say okay here is mr 
we produced your software can you check so we all sit together and go through the product and make sure the product owner is happy so we always want customer to be happy customer is always should be your forefront never think that okay i deliver something got the money here is a software get lost no never think that customer is the king once you have a very good customer they will give you very good feedback right it's always word of mouth if you tell to someone that okay i ordered something through uh, what do you say zomato and the customer service was very good i got it on time what the other people will do they will order from zomato correct so always keep customers happy why amazon became a big success they are keeping customers happy they do returns free deliveries right we never thought of free returns if you don't like the product we can return it to amazon free of charge right i never thought of returning is possible in when i was a kid in india now it's all possible right it's all customer service it's not just about selling product and getting the money or looking at to profit thing profit model so always make sure you have to think about customer satisfaction you can do that right now from your college itself you think who is your customer at this time your staff could be your customers right they may ask you to do something right maybe a project or mini project or uh, uh, what do you say a uh, notes or could be anything or your friends could be your customer wherever you are providing a service or you are giving something the person at the receiving end is your customer they are they have to be happy right so this is a, a overview of how it would happen in the real time situation right if there is a scrum what is the other methods available at the moment previously when i started we used to have a waterfall approach where they define the requirements and then design everything develop everything test it and then launch it so the whole process say for example if you are designing a big project right let's say, say an example of uh, whatsapp okay so we can easily correlate it this total time to develop whatsapp let's assume it takes one year right so some company says okay can you develop something for me like a whatsapp a chat message system here is the money you got 1 lakh rupees yeah take the 1 lakh rupees develop it and you say that okay it's going to take one year for me to develop right and you say okay bye meet you in one year after one year you call the client and say okay here is the software but you forgot to put a send button there in your software so what is the time waste there there is a wastage of one year the customer didn't see the product for one year you developed something which is not fit for the purpose for the customer so a customer is not happy so we wasted customer's money customer satisfaction time your time and also customer time so they came up with a new approach called agile people call it as scrum agile what it does it breaks down the development into small chunks that's that's what you are seeing in the screen now sprint 1 sprint 2 sprint 3 and so on and so forth so the one year there may be 12 sprints each month one sprint what you happen in first month they design the front end just uh, out uh, front end for whatsapp they show it to the client this is how it's going to look but still you can send a message you can do attachment you can send photos you can do anything but this is how it's going to look like and sprint 2 what they are going to do they are put a test box and a send button ask the customer are you happy yes customer is happy customer is getting a confidence now that they are getting something for their money right and sprint 3 what will happen they are going to put an attachment button where you can attach photos send it reply choose a message and then reply to that so on so forth right so you are getting my point what is the advantage in adopting agile approach this is the approach at the moment companies are adapting 
not many companies i would say 80% of the companies or 90% of the companies they are using agile approach so what i want you to do is what i want you to do is to complete it in sorry uh, to go to youtube and see what agile is right now you are an it student what are the other skills you need as an it student you should have a sales skill you should have negotiation you should build the trust confidence presentation skill you should have everything it's not just the pure technical skill you need for survival when you go to a company they say okay go and speak to a client when you want to speak to a client you should have a good communication skill you should have good negotiation skill to negotiate on the projects the costing everything you should have marketing skills to market your product right you should have a confidence right and what about the facebook linkedin twitter instagram thing how it is going to help me at the moment how we may be using facebook or twitter or linkedin instagram is to share our statuses like okay yeah i saw that movie i see i saw that i went to this place i am right now you have to use the tool in the right way you have to facebook is open anyone can see your facebook when you go to the interview what people will do the company would do they just try to see whether you are in linkedin you are in facebook they go and check your profile they will they will try to build an image of you even before you attending the interview to know your background it's not just these resume or cv that tells about you your facebook profile tells about you your linkedin will tell about you your instagram will tell about you because they are all open anyone can see your facebook profile so make sure from now onwards you build up your facebook in such a way that you are an it professional right right let's quickly go through a life of it professional so after getting a degree we all get a job then next thing is we buy a house raise a family and pay bills like yeah car loan whatever it is and do the same thing right and then can we retire no we can't retire then we have to do the same thing for our children correct so we will be doing a 7 to 7 job throughout our life 7 o'clock we start from home go to work come back home at 7 o'clock eat sleep then get up at 7 o'clock so it's like a routine right we don't want to do that we want okay how is the life of business people what they do they get a degree they become an entrepreneur still they got a house family bills to pay and they get a financial freedom what i mean by financial freedom is they set up a business and they employ people to work there and they get a free time to spend time with their family and they teach their kids how to be financially free by setting up a business they don't the entrepreneurs don't study just the technical skill they study about the money they study about business finance what is happening the tax policies around the world all those things they study right so you have to start thinking okay after coming out of my engineering degree i'll work in mnc but my vision or goal is to start my own it company that's how i can get a financial freedom and i can spend time with my family i no need to ask anyone for a holiday or anything right when you have your own business you can take holiday whenever you want but still the business will continue right people will be there to for you to work i want to quickly go through this how many of you has had about esba quadrant just put hashtag yes in the comment because this is one of the key thing so you should learn about esba quadrant in youtube and learn about robert kiyosaki he is an author of rich dad and poor dad poor dad there is a book so go to youtube just type in rich dad poor dad or esba quadrant or robert kiyosaki something will come up you just learn what it is so the whole world how it works is they divide the people into four sectors e they put some people under e some people under s yes, and b and i what is e employee who has got a white collar job people my white collar job is like people working in uh, banking people working in an industry
people working in uh, manufacturing industries production engineering or could be anything like that people where people go to an office get paid get monthly payment monthly salary that's what they do what they do they they are exchanging their time for money and there is some sectors of people who are self employed like electrician plumber right so what they do they still exchange their time for money if they didn't go to work on a particular day they won't get paid but but one advantage is if they want to go on a holiday there is no boss for them there is no manager so they can go on a holiday but only thing is they won't get paid does it look nice yeah because i don't need to ask anyone for a holiday right then there are some other people who are business owners what they do they set up a business and make people work for your business right let's assume you got a shop a big mall right you employ people to work in that shop and you sit at home manage it remotely so you don't go to the shop daily but people work for your business still you get a profit right so if you take a day off still you get a money if you go on a holiday for a week business is not going to get affected right business is going to run you are going to get a profit and there are some class of people who are investors so they don't set up a business they invest money in a business right there are only 5% of the population like who are investors so from now on we should think as an it professional we don't want to be in e sector we may go into yes sector which is self employed or business owner like entrepreneur right so that's what we should focus on okay let's quickly rush through because i'm conscious on time as well we got only 5 10 minutes okay what is a cash flow cash flow is money coming in so we know there are different class of people like a poor middle class and wealthy people what happens in the poor class sectors they get a money on a day job they spend it on food or whatever it is that's a job uh, money is gone they go to job next day get the money spend on food then middle class what they do they get the monthly salary they got the expenses like a housing loan or uh, car loan or anything and they put some amount in assets like fixed deposit or something what wealthy people does they invest straight away invest in assets assets give the money back there is no expense for them there is no liability because all the expenses are business tax deductible right so that's why rich get richer and poor get poorer so i want you to read about robert kiyosaki esba quadrant in youtube one second because this is a very good concept the reason i am telling you is it may not be directly directly related to it or the course you are studying but this is more important for your life i learned this only 10 years ago right i really feel sorry for not learning this or knowing this that such thing exist in the world so this is just to give you an awareness that such thing exist so you can go to youtube learn about it upgrade your skill set not just on python or it or machine learning you should know all these things as well how the whole world exist how i want to become like an entrepreneur think like a professional because we are all doing a professional courses we are not just it student not we are not going to do any clerical jobs we are it professionals it's a professional study like a doctor engineer it's a professional study right so we should think like a professional your goal should be like you want to be an entrepreneur you should be a boss for your own company you employ many people there so you are solving unemployment problem right so you should always think big i think the meeting soon i guess i am sure the coordinators are going to extend the meeting id meeting let's see 
let's move on to the next slide if it starts stops i think yeah we got the link now then i'll try to reconnect okay i am an it student what our general thought is this is based on my thinking when i was when i passed out of uh, college this is how i thought okay as i i am an it student and i want to own latest gadget i want to have an apple iphone or whatever it is latest phones and work in an mnc buy a three bedroom house in a nice location buy a car and go on a holiday right that's what most of us think is it right just put yes in the comment box so i know you are still following but yeah i can see comments from praveen and nirmala yeah it's good so what are these are they liabilities i think you all know about a certain liability right i'm not going to take accounts class but yeah liability is something uh, which is not good for you asset is something that you own it's building asset right okay so what a gadget it's a liability once you buy a new phone that's it it value depreciates you are not going to get any revenue from that work in mnc yeah you are in a quadrant e you know what quadrant e right you are working in an mnc company right so you go it's like a morning nine to five job or nine seven to seven job if you don't go to work no salary but still you are getting money which is good then buy a house is it a liability or asset many people will say buying a house is an asset but i would say it is not an asset it is a liability unless you buy a house and give it to rent from where you are getting money every month then it is an asset right you buy your own house you live there if you didn't get a job how are you going to pay the housing loan right it is a liability right asset is something that you should give, get money back from it so buying your own house is not a liability but if you buy a second house and rent it out somewhere where you get money from that house then it is an asset okay let's move on buying a car is a liability right i would say it's not an asset but even my father or would say yeah we should get an asset like buy a car no a car is not a asset it's a liability because once you buy the value depreciates and it sits in front of your portico for nothing right you are not getting money from that then going on a holiday it's still a liability why you go on a holiday spend money you are not getting anything back okay how can i turn this uh, liability into an asset there is a way for that let's see if you start a company if you are an entrepreneur say you are a businessman then you buy a phone through your company you claim as an expense in your company right so the company will pay for the phone it is tax deductible you are not paying tax for that right which is good very good working for mnc is good but if you become entrepreneur more added advantage buy a house you start doing property investing buy a second house and rent it out so there are ways to build an asset buy a car if you are not using rent it out to somewhere right so you are getting money out of it so you are turning your car into an asset where you get monthly rent let it be 1000 1000 rupees a day or 2000 rupees a day or something but still you are getting money something out of it go on a holiday how can i turn the holiday into an asset or not a liability not a liability liability if you have a company you do a business visit you business visit to bombay from chennai that becomes an business expense tax deductible right you are not paying from your pocket right so that's that's why you should think like an entrepreneur or a businessman right i am just putting a seed all you have to do is reprogram the top 3 inches of your brain that's what we are doing now we are just reprogramming your thinking you are not just an it software developer now you are and you are a businessman or an entrepreneur now right your total perspective perspective should be different now you are doing a professional study you are a business entrepreneur now how is this connected with my it education i am doing a b degree or btech degree or something 
right? How these business terminologies connect with me? What it is to do with me? You may be thinking, okay, I didn't join this webinar to learn all these things or know about this. I want to know something about what is Python. What is the syntax for for loop, end loop, while loop? No, 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 no. You can do those things in YouTube and your lecturers are the best person to teach you all the technical stuffs. What I am sharing is my experience from what I did, right? I don't want you to make the same mistake I did, right? Just learn from others. That's the main thing. Okay, how should I do it? You may be having, okay, I want, okay, I get what you say. I want to be an entrepreneur, but how to do it? Where is the first step for that, right? There are so many options. Can someone guide me? Yeah, that may be your question. Is that right? Just put yes or some hashtag, comment something. Or if you have any questions, just put it there. Right. When you travel to your college, you may be coming in a college bus or, or when you're traveling to somewhere in a train or something, you should always observe the surrounding. What challenges people have? What struggle people have? Just have, always have a notebook or a mobile phone, you have a mobile phone, right? Where you can have a note apps or something like that. Then just list down or paper pencil is the best. I always have a paper and a pencil. Even I don't use a pen, I use a pencil. So it never lets me down. So paper and pencil is best friend. Always have it in hand. See, just observe the society or people around you, what problem they have, what challenges they have. Then, Think like a business person. Who has got the problem? Is it the common man, common people, or the business people? Right? Now you are segmenting your customers. Who is having a problem? Is it a common man as a consumer, or a people sell, having a shops or something like that, business people? Then segment the customers. Then you should ask why, why this problem should be solved, right? Is it, are you going to solve this problem just as a helping tendency or not? Or is it going to make their life easier, right? A simple example I would say is, if you go to a train station, many people would be queuing to get a train ticket, right? Just wind it back, go back around 20, 30 years back. People would be standing in the queue to get a ticket. As a businessman, what you should think, oh, people are signing in the queue to get a train ticket. What I, can, what I can do to solve this issue? You come up with an online uh, ticketing system. You come up with an online ticketing system. Is everything OK? Yeah. You Yes, online reservation system eliminates this problem. So you should think like a businessman or entrepreneur. What is the problem? Online reservation is an example I gave that is in place now, right? So similar to that, you should see what problem people have. It could be a very simple problem, right? It could be like a takeaway order, right? People uh, say, for example, people, uh, disabled people or physically challenged people at home, they want to go to a restaurant. They can't go right? They can't drive or something. They can't walk. So we got an online order, ordering, Zomato. They're just at home. They order it. Hotel delivers. So you should always think what the problem is and how this can be solved, right? And you should always get feedback from the customers. That's how you should think. Always get feedback from the customers when you do any softwares. Like, is there any way I can improve it? Go to Amazon. You always have reviews. Do you think Amazon don't read the reviews? They always read all the reviews you post in Amazon or any online system. They take that very seriously and they improve that, improve their service. So feedback, yeah, it's more important. Okay, as an IT student now, I don't get, I don't have a job, but how can I become an entrepreneur? What are the steps I can take? right? It's very easy. 
you can do case uh, studies. You can do mini projects at home. I know you are all going to do final year projects. I think in year semester eight or something, you're going to do project, but I would suggest do it very seriously. Don't buy the project from anywhere else. Do it very seriously because you are going to showcase this because this is the first projects that's going to go in your resume or CV, right? When you go to interview, people will ask, okay, what is your project, right? If you tell the project title, people would easily know whether this is bought from the market or you did. So the passion to do your project should be there always, right? And you can brainstorm with your friends, professors, share your ideas, talk to lecturers. Lecturers will always be ready to help you. It could be like a silly idea. Just share with your friends. Always get positive criticism or even the negative feedback or anything, you should always be ready to accept the negative feedback because that was, those are the stepping stones. College is the best place to get the negative feedback and negative criticism. Because if you go out and get a job and in your job, if you get a negative criticism, it may put you off. But in college, who are they? They are all for our friends, our lecturers. You are going to live with your lecturers for the next four years or three years or so, right? So they are like your well-wishers. So always share your ideas, brainstorm with them, right? How can you do a virtual project? Let's assume that you are traveling from your home to college in college bus or you are going on a holiday to your native place in a train. Just have a pen and paper, write a problem, what, what you see, right? It could be a simple problem. Write what the problem you are seeing outside, right? Just write a statement like, okay, this is the problem I have. Then for that problem, imaginary, you design a front end in the paper. So have a pen and paper. You just write down, this is the problem, and you design a front end for that. And for this front end, you design a database design. Okay, there is a login page. Okay, you do this, you store this information. This is how I do it. Just do a small diagram that is enough. Then decide what softwares in the market I can use to solve this problem. You can do that, right? You can say, okay, whether I can use Java for this, I can, can I use Python, can I use machine learning? You just come up with that and then do a small PPT, PowerPoint presentation or something. Just put your ideas, just talk to yourself or talk to your friends, then take that piece of paper. It could be just a one page pencil drawing. Go to your professor, go to your lecturer and say, okay, I saw this ma'am outside, there was a problem and this is my design. Can I get your thoughts? Can I get some inputs? Does it look good? Just share your idea, right? You can do those things, right? That's how you should start. I didn't do that. You may ask the question, have you done that? No, I didn't do that because I don't know whether I can do such things. I didn't get that idea. If, uh, if I got that idea, if someone has told me that, I would be very thankful to them saying that, okay, fine, yeah, you changed my perspective. But these are all the learnings I had now. Now there is no time travel. There is no time machine for me to go back to my college days, do these things, right? But I'm doing this now for my company, all right? I worked with around more than 10 clients at the moment. So they, from various industries. So these are my ex experience. I'm just putting my experience in one hour and giving to you. So don't make the same mistake I did. Don't waste time. There is no time machine at all, right? So. Buy a notebook, keep it your personal notebook, your project notebook. Each page you can have a project, right? You don't need to have a nice formatting, documentation, typing, nothing. Just write it in a pencil and thing and see whether your project can be scalable and how you just think how you can monetize your project. What I mean by monetization, how you can sell your product. What are the marketing skills you need to sell your product, right? What are the negotiation skills? Who is going to be the end user? For your project these are all virtual right but you are preparing your mind you are getting familiar yourself to become an entrepreneur how the outside world is going to be once you do all these things you get a confidence within you that okay yeah i can do a project i know what things to do in the project what database design is once you say database design then you get an idea oh god how do i do it in a database you just go to online and say okay i want a database design to capture customer information how do you do it you just google it and read something right that's where you learn like a real time learning right front end design you just go to google and say okay what are the front end tools available right that's how you learn 
unless you have a problem or a project in place it's hard to learn there is no starting point to learn you should be wondering okay should i start database learning first or front end design first or what should i do you just create your own virtual imaginary project and start working on that right no one would mistake you right do that so it's always yeah it's always earlier to start now and then perfect later right when i say start now what i want you all to do is get a notebook plain notebook put your name and say your project ideas right put it as your project ideas each page put a date and say your project ideas so by final year at least you would have 20 30 projects in the final year project you can choose one of them right choose pick the best one if you can't do it in final year at least when you start up your own business you can implement all your ideas right so you got projects to do you can do as a project uh, part time project got it right does it make sense just put it as make sense in the comment box does it help you yeah so that's that's why you should always go from it to business 2.0 that's why i meant as 2.0 so you are not doing 1.0 1.0 is steady it work in a it company end your life no we don't want that we don't want to do work 7 to 7 right what's happening in india now people get up 7 o'clock in the morning catch the office bus travel for 2 hours go to work start from work at 6 o'clock travel 2 hours back home in traffic reach home at 8 o'clock have food sleep are they spending time with their wife are they spending time with their kids are they teaching their kids some people do but majority of my friends and even i was in that situation when i was working in india right i'll be tired i come home i just take a bath have nice food go to sleep that's what i do it's like a lodge my home is like a lodge for me i come here to sleep that's what i do we want to move away from the routine monotonous 7 to 7 job right you should always think about business to it 2.0 it's it's okay to skip 1.0 you don't need to learn through 1.0 you just learn from others from the college you should always have an idea i want to become an it entrepreneur i want to give at least 10 people a job make improve their life life of 10 people don't always take your resume and go to each and every company and give them, oh sir do you have a job sir do you have a job sir do you have a job no you are an it professional you are a professional student have you seen any doctors taking their resume or cv going to each hospital and saying doctor do you have a job for me no we are a professional students we are engineers right so we should always think that we should give job to people right think big there is a magic of thinking big we should always think big irrespective of whether it is possible or not always think big always imagine yourself that you are an it entrepreneur right you have to improve your communication skill right when i say communication skill english language skill well, i don't mean that you should forget your mother tongue or tamil or whatever the language you speak that is more important because using mother tongue you think but english is the business language for communication that is just a business language right i don't like english i use business i use english only as a tool to sell my business i personally like tamil i speak tamil at home my kids they all speak tamil they go to tamil school and i say tamil school they learn tamil now right so english is a tool to communicate to others to share idea because it's all global now right your clients may be in australia your clients may be in china your clients may be in america africa it could be anywhere so english is a common language so make sure you improve your communication skill always hears go to youtube just put it learn english learn phonetics how english conversation skill those are the building blocks now you got the time you got two hours to start the formula you said something like that take it do you have any questions any questions 
because I'm almost done with my presentations and uh, now it's a time for any Q&A. If you have any questions, yeah, happy to answer any of them. All I want to do is reprogram the top three inches of your brain now. That's what, because you are a programmer, you can easily reprogram your brain now, right? Think big. That's the thing I want you all. Right? And thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to share my ideas, share my experience with you all. And I'm very happy that, yeah, you are all very patient to listen and spend your time. Yeah, I got a question. Okay. Any question? From Nirmala, how to choose a tool to develop any software. Uh, which year you are studying? If you don't mind, are you in year two or year three or final year? Oh, sorry. I'm extremely sorry. Sorry, <laughs> oh, faculty. Okay. Uh, so you, to start with, don't worry about any tool at all. Just build a project and see what tool is needed to build your project and then study that tool. For your project, that's how, because there are hundreds and hundreds of tools. You can't study all the tool. I don't know all the tool. I know only certain tool which is needed for my business. Right? Okay, as I said, uh, the, go to YouTube and search for big data technologies. Before learning tool, just learn about that. What is big data? What is machine learning? What it is? What is cloud company? First, you should know what it is. The step two is what tools are available. Just make a list. What it is? Then step two is what are the tools available? Number three is, you would have seen the quadrant, which tool is most wanted in the market, right? There are hundreds of tools, that, but there may be only specific tools needed for everything. Let's take an example, big data, right? Hadoop is one of the most wanted now. So you choose what big data is, what Hadoop is, then learn about Hadoop data. Python, I would highly recommend Python. So study, okay, let me put some of the tools in chat. Uh, Microsoft DA, Python. So those are the basic thing. You should know about database. When I say database, there are now no SQL database, MongoDB. There is something called MongoDB, no SQL databases. Those are used in mobile technologies. You should know about those. So first, know what are the tools available. That should be your first step. And pick up, a, find out which tool is more most wanted in the market. Because when you come out of college, you should get a job. You should not search job for one year or six months. The moment you come out of the job, when in the first interview, you should say, I know about Python, I know about MongoDB. You don't need to be an expert. That's a key thing. You don't need to be an expert in Python or artificial intelligence. Just talk about Python. Talk about artificial intelligence. What is possible? Show your interest. Right? Any other questions? Uh, what is market condition? Marketing would be a big challenge. How to promote the product when there are more competitors? That's a good question, uh, question from Joel. Yes, marketing is big. That's why I said you should promote yourself as a professional in Facebook. Facebook is the top most marketing tool, a free marketing tool that can reach, right? Don't just post unnecessary, unnecessary thing in Facebook. Don't put something like, okay, I hate that, I hate this, I hate that politics, this politics. That's not your job. You are an IT. You are building a personal profile in Facebook. Use Facebook as a tool. Every week or every day, you post something, what you have learned in Facebook. Just go to Facebook Live and just talk about something. Go live in Facebook and say, okay, today I saw this problem and I'm, this is my solution for that. Guys, can you give me your feedback for that? So over time, you are building your Facebook profile. So someone goes to your Facebook, what they see, 
Oh, uh, Joel's Facebook profile is more techy. Oh, it looks like he's more into IT. Let me get connected with the Joel. And companies will say, Joel, I saw, I like your idea. Can you explain me more? See how you're thinking. Yeah. So you are changing, you are building your personal, personal profile in social media. These are the things I learned after coming here in the last five years, right? I'm not telling, do, uh, I'm not telling to avoid Facebook or anything. Use the tool as a right thing. YouTube, don't use it to just for watch movies or songs. You can do it as an entertainment, but see what you can learn, what you can learn from YouTube. Facebook, what you can learn from Facebook, how you can use it to build up. Go to LinkedIn profile. You should all have a LinkedIn profile now, right? And you should subscribe to latest tools and technologies. You always get it in your inboxes. Facebook, go to Facebook. You might have seen some groups or pages, Microsoft pages. Just subscribe to that. When he says, go to like the page, you get a feed from Microsoft, feed from artificial intelligence groups. Just read that. That's how you should use Facebook as an example. This is just an example. And anything else? Is Thank there you. anything else? Yeah, I can finish it off now. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. one twenty-five now for me. Okay. I think I have to go back to my office. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for your interactive session. Now the word of thanks can be given by Punita Nicolin, ma'am. Good evening, Tom. No duty is more important than that of returning thanks. First of all, I would like to start my gratitude by giving glory to the God Almighty for making this occasion a fruitful one. I thank the management of PSNA College of Engineering and Technology to provide and support to conduct an international live webinar on IT to Business 2.0. This to express our hearty thanks to Chairperson Tirumadi or Dhanalachmi ma'am, Pro Chairman Rotarian RSK Ragram sir. I must mention our deep sense of thanks to Principal Dr. D. Vasudevan sir. Our beloved head of the department, Dr. D. Shanti, ma'am. I also thank the chief guest, Mr. M. Monica Vasaran, sir, for his interactive session. We are extremely thankful to all participants from different organizations for making this event a, a grand success. I also thank faculty coordinator of this event. Thank you. Thank you all. So all the participants are requested to fill the feedback, then only you can get the certificates. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. So, can I okay, leave yes, the meeting now? Yes sir, yes sir. You can leave. Thank, Thank you. Good luck to everyone. All the best. Cheers. Bye.